people who are doing hardcore self-improvement. It's called PE. There are forums that are dedicated to this and it's very possible. Like there are guys who have dedicated a ton of time to it and have gotten upwards of two to three inches in gain. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Hey guys, it's Hinker. So today I'm gonna to be making a video on one of my freaking heroes, Derek, more plates, more dates. He is the one, as you can see from that clip, that actually like blew my mind the frick open completely because I thought it was impossible. I thought it was stuck with my size. And then he came along and made this video and literally changed my life. Like I admire Derek, like just, honestly, he's probably like one of the smartest people I've ever seen talk. And I've seen like a lot of like professors and everything. I wanted to make this video and I'm not gonna go like hot take on here because like he has some really good information. Some of it is not so good, but I do like need to address this video, you know, because I think it's important. But you know, I don't know if you guys, like for example, when major like life things happen, like you oftentimes remember exactly like what happened. Like for example, I remember exactly what I was doing when like the news broke about 9-11. Like when I saw this YouTube video by More Plates, More Dates, like about enlargement, like I'll never forget what I was doing. Like it was a summer day, I was sitting at my island. I had these Dan Dan noodles from a local like Chinese place. And like literally I clicked on the video and like I stopped eating and my like, mouth dropped open wide because I could not believe that this is possible. There's some really good things in this video. There's some things that they can do better. So we're gonna address those today. Just to be clear, like in my in my opinion, like Derek is like one of the men's health, like greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. And like I've literally modeled everything, even like partially my supplement company after his. There will be no like disrespect to Derek in this video. I really admire him. To start off, like he made this video because of Connor Murphy, so I guess I owe Connor Murphy a thank you, like funny enough. But so like in this clip here. I was terrified to talk to you about this. I thought that I would be less of a man if I tried to do this thing. He talks about like how he was terrified to talk about this because you know he didn't want to be viewed as less as a, less of a man. Like as the same way, guys, is quite honestly part of the reason I wear my mask. Also, like people are crazy on the internet to protect my anonymity, but you know it is still a very taboo subject. Guys don't want to talk about things like penis insecurity and whatnot. Let's get that out of the way right now. I'm not going to tell you how big it is. Uh, Actually, I, I will tell you how big it is. Okay, <laughs> guess what? It was two inches. I grew it by 1.5 inches. It's 3.5 inches now. Whoa, Connor's dragging. Then here, guys, he talks about how it was only like two inches and now it's three and a half inches. Like, statistically, I'm not gonna say that's impossible, but that's dang near impossible because like, that's more than like three standard deviations below normal. That's like a full standard deviation below a micro, actual micro penis. If he had something like an androgen sensitivity, like syndrome or like a growth hormone deficiency syndrome or something, like, yeah, I might believe it, but like, it's Connor Murphy. Like he's jacked, he has like facial hair. He's clearly not like DHT deprived. I mean, so it, it's impossible. So he's lying right there. I don't like that. This is what it is, okay? Now, this is the one that's been scientifically studied. The links to the scientific studies are in the description. This has been shown to increase length in multiple studies and it is shown to be safe. And here guys, in this clip, he talks about how like there's actual multiple studies and you know, it's Connor Murphy, he makes, he used to make, I don't know, I've never seen his stuff, these like wild videos and you know, people don't believe what he says, but he's like spot on with this. Like there's legit data and I've talked about it before guys. I've made several videos like this video on like going breaking through the data on extender studies. And guys, if you don't mind, just take a quick second to give a thumbs up or a shout out to Callie in the comments because these kind of videos are a lot of work for him and he works his ass off to help make my videos and help grow this channel. So please give him a quick shout out the human tissue goes through mitosis it creates more cells look at this lady she gradually increased the tension in her neck over time all right guys and in this clip here connor talks about how like oh there's evidence of this being possible because this lady stretched her neck you don't understand that is not stretching out the neck it's literally pushing down the collarbones look at this x-ray here you can actually see that the weight of the rings literally causes the collarbones to depress into the chest and give an illusion of a long neck it has like so many complications guys but like, I hate when people try to use that this like, oh, see, enlargement is possible because look at this lady's neck. No, and even Derek does it, which was very disappointing because like he's very like knowledge based. But even there was like a, like a, a PE company that I don't want to bash, so I'm not going to mention the name. But like in part of their promo, they were like, look at all this proof of concept. Like here are these ladies, see it works. You know, I tried to be kind of respectful, but I was like, guys, you don't know what you're talking about. This is, this is proof of like bone depression. If it is under tension for enough time, 
it will grow. And here, Connor is spot on. He's saying if there's enough time under tension, yes, you will grow. And, and it's true, guys. Total is about three years. And I probably average from about zero to two hours every day. Estimation-wise, probably about 1,500 hours. He used it on and off for about five years, about three years of total work, and about zero to two hours per day which was about 1,500 hours. We grew about 1.5 inches in three years. Guys, that's like, that, that's kind of spot on. Like, I, th I think that that's a pretty reasonable thing to expect. I would say between 1.5 and two years, depending on what you do, but he actually got that right. I never thought I'd be agreeing with Connor Murphy, but like most of the stuff he says is like spot on. Far better than the advice I've seen on some of these other channels, like, like Alpha M or whatever. So now we're gonna talk about like Derek's part of the video, guys. Once again, I, I literally could not thank Derek enough. I hope I meet him one day so I can just tell him how much he freaking changed my life. You know what? Enhancement, PE, and there are forums that are dedicated to this and it's very possible. Like there are guys who have dedicated a ton of time to it and have gotten upwards of two to three inches in gain. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. In this clip, he says like, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I trusted him for like fitness advice, like weightlifting, you know, I never did like the pharmaceuticals of bodybuilding or whatnot, but even hair loss guys, like I started my hair loss regimen because of him. And now he's telling me like, this is po this possible. Like I almost wanted to like cry happy tears because you know, I dealt with so much insecurity over my lifetime about this stuff. Lose body fat and allow more of the bad boy out of his cage. So that's actually pretty spot on. There's something called the inner penis, which is hidden by a fat pad kind of above your pubic bone. And you'll note that if you are a fat ass, you have, <laughs> you have, way more fat pad than the next guy. So there's something called bone pressed length and non bone pressed length. And bone pressed is how much length you could have if you were diced. Non bone pressed length is how much length you actually have. And you'll note if you just push a ruler as far into your pelvis as you can, you see exactly what you could have if you were like five, six percent body fat, I guess. What's a hink video without fat bashing? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but like once again, Derek's like, dude, lose weight. Like guys, like I'm not gonna perseverate here, but if, if you think you need to be bigger or are interested in any kind of enlargement, try getting very lean. Like Derek would say, just like peeled to the bone or whatever his expressions are. And like I guarantee you, most of you all wouldn't feel a need to get bigger because literally you would have more visible length. This guy actually just said, how much can I expect to gain if I use only the pump? If you're new to PE, I would say, Within six months, you can gain a half inch girth on that. You can gain, when it's all said and done, if you use it every day for like, you know, for like a couple of years or something, you could gain an inch or more. And yeah. then girth, you can gain like, Decent amount. Or yeah. Almost an inch and a half. Yeah. yeah. Here, guys, he brings on like Chris, good looking loser, which I also have a huge thank you to him because like his videos and demonstrations literally taught me how to do manual stretches. He is one of the forefathers of PE as far as I'm consider as far as I would consider it. But he says that in six months you can gain a half an inch in length. Fairly reasonable. I still think that's a little bit overestimating. And then he says in, in basically a year, you can get an inch or more in length and in girth and like an inch and a half. I think that that is, that is an overestimation personally, especially when you're just talking about using a device like, like a pump, but it's not that far off. My problem with that is like, guys, I made a whole video about what actually realistic gains are. My problem with that is that like, if you go into this thinking that in a year, you're going to be gain an inch and a half in girth like you're gonna be disappointed. And therefore, like when you're doing your calculations and, and it's six months in and you've barely got like two tenths of an inch in girth, you're gonna be like, PE doesn't work and just be another one of those naysayers. That's why I think it's important to have realistic expectations. What I say is if you go into this in a year, a half an inch in length, at about a quarter of an inch in girth. Like, I think that that is a reasonable expectation. Many of you guys will exceed that, but that way, if you exceed it, you're not disappointed I mean, you're ecstatic, but then if you just, if you actually meet that, you're, you know, still going to be expecting those gains. And then very few people, if you're consistent, are going to be under that. So I think it's important to have like a realistic expectation. Also, the most intense thing you can do for length is something called hanging, and I don't recommend it. Me and Chris <laughs> discussed it, and it was, it was actually pretty funny. I never did it myself because it is probably the most, probably, I don't know, for sure, but it's arguably the most dangerous but also the highest risk to highest reward length exercise you can do. And it's basically just progressive overload with weights hanging from you. Here he talks about hanging and he says like, 
Hanging is the most dangerous, but it's also the highest risk to reward. You know, here's where we disagree because he also mentions multiple times, like he promotes jail king, okay? Or as Alpha M would say, jail queen. So it, like the problem is like jail king is one of the most dangerous things you could do pound for pound, guys. I literally do in injury coaching on my Patreon slash Doc Hink, but like without a doubt, the most injuries I see are from people that are doing, are jelking. I think that jelking is far more dangerous than hanging. And I think that hanging, especially when done correctly, it's a static stretch. You literally put a device and just apply weight and there's just a constant pressure. I really don't think it's that dangerous, especially if you guys are using a high quality device like mail hanger, you know, shout out to Ben. There you go, Ben. Free promo right there, brother. You know, you're really not at risk of actually injuring yourself. The more you, you know, stretch it, the more you, it's going to eventually adapt just like those, you know, the people with the super long necks, the super long ears, the whatever. You just have to make sure you don't damage it in the process and prevent yourself from being able to fucking use it still. So once again, guys, here he says, basically, the more you stretch, the more you're going to, your tissue is going to adapt, just like gauging your ears or like the chick with the neck rings, but chick with the neck rings, depressing the clavicles, guys. Like I'm not, don't, please don't be like a prick about it. But if you ever see somebody that's trying to talk about enlargement and they're referencing, like using neck stretching as an example, you know, they, they don't know what they're talking about guys. Okay. Just, just question whatever they say. I'm not saying that they don't know what they're talking about. Just question what they say. You should question anything anybody says, really, even me. So the things that do work, first of all, there's stuff you can do for free before you go buy something. Jelking and stretching, if you don't know what those are. Guys, this clip here where he talks about how with manual stretches, it's it's free and it can work and you can get like a full inch in length. When I watched this video, like I immediately went on to Good Looking Loser. Like I don't even honestly know if I finished my lunch and I like went into the bathroom and started doing manuals or at least started like going through the videos. Like uh, I can't tell you how much this was like literally revolutionary. And like he says, it is time consuming guys, but like, it's not that time consuming, especially if you do it like the way I recommend. And you know, guys, like I have my own course, like I've been through, I've been doing this research. I've looked at clinical studies. Like I know what the hell I'm talking about. If you want to be personally coached one-on-one -on -one through me, through like a video guide, like my link is in the description guys. If you want to check it out, I also have a lot of free resources or free resources just on my YouTube channel. You can expect to naturally gain one to two inches in length and 0.5 to 1.5 inches in girth. If you're, you know, doing this fairly moderately, doing like the full gambit of everything you can be doing, not including hanging though. Um, and most guys who take the exercises fairly serious for 12 to 18 months can gain one to 1.5 inches regardless of starting size. I'm basically just reading off my article right now, by the way, this is the thing I wrote back in the day. So guys, in this clip, he talks about how you can get like one to two inches of length and 0 0.5 to like 1.5 inches in girth in about 12 to 18 months. Once again, like, do I think that that is possible? I do think it's possible. Do I think that it's realistic? I don't think that it's realistic. My problem with this is like, I think it's setting yourself up for disappointment. Cause like I first heard these numbers and like, I got nowhere, I won't say I got nowhere near these numbers, but like, I definitely didn't hit like those higher levels, especially within my first year. He does talk about how like newbie gains are real guys, like newbie gains are, are real. Without a doubt, like my growth went way up and now it's kind of like leveled off. It's still going up, but it's like going up. Like for example, in the past six months, I've gained two tenths of an inch in length. Like in the first six months, I gained like well over half an inch in length. It is kind of diminishing returns with more time. Set your, set your expectations low, like screw even like the year benefit. Your, your goals, in my opinion, guys, should be like, okay, for this first month, I'm going to be consistent and I'm going to do it five days a week, okay? Like goals like that, not necessarily like measuring progress. If you want to measure something like stretch flaccid length, I think that that's one of the most reasonable early metrics to know whether you're actually growing is measuring stretch flaccid, okay? Because you're going to get stretch flaccid and then eventually that's going to turn to erect gains. Maintaining is not the hardest thing. You just have to stick with it. Like you'll probably lose like at least 50% of what you gained if you totally stop and you don't do anything to like even a maintenance routine of like once or twice a week. He says you're going to lose 50% of your gains like if you completely stop. But you know, I would disagree with that because so a lot of like the gains he talks about here, I think are largely related to actually like edema or just like subcutaneous tissue. Like if you're pumping kind of like the way he suggests, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, like then that's not actually real tissue gain in the first place. You're just chronically exposing your tissue, chronically swelling with edema, not actually expanding the tissue. But if you like do the techniques that I talk about and you actually gain your actual penile tissue, like I've taken as much as four months off 
and haven't lost anything just because it's like it's actual tissue that's amassed. In general, I think if you stop completely, I think you'll lose about 20%. Okay, more or less, it's hard to say for sure. Some people may be more, some people may be less, especially if some of those gains are like erectile quality gains that you get from like pumping every day. But you're not gonna lose 50% of what you gain, guys. I do think that it is kind of important to do important to do some maintenance, even if that's like maybe once or twice a week, doing a little bit of stretching or like a pumping session, you can keep 100% of your gains permanently. The amount of hours you wear it is pretty much what determines how much results you're gonna get. The more hours, the more you're gonna get, kind of like what Connor said. But guys, here he talks about how basically the more hours you put in, the more gains you're going to get. Here I kind of disagree with him a little bit because I don't think more is more when it comes to pee. Now, if you look at these actual low tension extender studies, they're doing it for like four to eight hours a day. That's what the most clinical studies are, are on. And that's what like the most actual clinical evidence is on. But I do think that you don't need to do that much to still get gains. So, you know, for example, I've been doing like 30 minutes of stretching every day and then like 20 minutes of pumping every day, but I've done it consistently and I've gained at almost the rate that he's describing like in this video. And I also think overworking is a real thing. You know, BD has several videos about like overwork and like tissue fatigue and so does like PERV and like measuring strain and these types of metrics that are associated with overworking. I do think that you can actually overwork and inhibit your gains. I disagree with him there. So this is uh all the stuff that comes in it, and these are just all the different components and whatnot. So guys, here he starts talking about like the Falasan Forte, okay? Like I actually looked into this because once again, it's Derek, like I trust him, like I was I was ready to pull the trigger, but like it just didn't make sense to me. An all day stretcher, I was trying to figure out like, I know I sleep beside my partner, I wasn't trying to, you know, bring her into the PE light due to my own insecurities, whatever guys. But so I knew like I couldn't like strap that device on at night. And I also knew, that, like I tried to figure out logistically how I could make it work at work and there's no way that I could wear that device like at work and have to take it off to pee and like I really did a deep dive into this guys and it just was not something that was sustainable to wear something like an all-day stretcher I didn't look into it that way and he says that this is FDA approved but guys it's not like FDA approved to make a normal man's penis bigger it's FDA approved for things like increasing length after things like prostate cancer surgery or other pelvic floor surgeries that are actually going to reduce your length and he talks about like how you can wear this device when you sleep. Like guys, never wear any kind of device when you sleep. I don't, I don't care if Derek is telling you that it's okay. Like I would never ever do that. If you're unconscious, you don't know if something's going wrong. If you get a, a blister along your actual, like the head of your penis from the vacuum cap, like there's so many things that can go wrong. I would never recommend you sleep in any kind of device. I don't care what it is. I think I have some of these links in the articles. They are affiliate links from like way back when I published. So if you if you click on it and you buy it, then obviously it's gonna support the channel. So I guess if you're interested in this shit, then some incentive to support the channel and grow your D at the same time. Guys, here he talks about how he has his affiliate links. So many people, like the second somebody mentions an affiliate leak, hey, pitchforks come out, burn him at the stake, burn him with fire. And like, guys, like I, I kind of get it. Like I, I do because it's like, this was all just an elaborate scheme to get me to buy something. Like I, I understand why you feel that way. But on the same line, guys, like, once again, I, 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 I could wish that I could instill the type of trust that Derek has. If I do ever promote something, you would know that it's because I genuinely believe in it, not because I'm like, okay, this is a get rich quick scheme. Like with Derek, he's genuinely trying to help you out. And he's like, hey guys, like I happen to have an affiliate link. If you want to support the channel and you want to buy this, then go for it. Like I have just respect for him. And like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Some of you guys just want everything for free. And the second anybody mentions any kind of possible financial incentive, you're just ready to, you know, burn somebody with fire. And that's, that's kind of messed up guys. It's like the equivalent of like fascial stretching I guess but it just like blows them out of it and um in my opinion this is like one of the like weakest points in the video is because he's basically like oh yeah you know I don't really know how it works but you put it on and it kind of inflates your thing and it's like they're you're a man of science like you, you know damn well like you got to do better than that guys I have an entire like pumping playlist breaking down play by play how exactly like pumping works and even when they've done actual like imaging showing that the the chambers of the penis can expand to like twice their regular size when exposed to negative pressure 
like it's it's not really hard to understand like negative flesh negative pressure actually causes the chambers to expand that chronic expansion causes dilation etc so i just i wish you would have done a better job with that guys this is the number one thing for girth if you only use this though you're not going to get a whole lot of length and that's kind of what me and chris talked about in that clip like you might get like half an inch to an inch if you just use this, but you'll get a ton of girth. Here he talks about how if you use this like BM device, you're not gonna get much length. Like I would disagree with that. I think you can still get quite a bit of length. Most people who use any kind of pump device are pumping and they're the length that they achieve is definitely more than their naturally like their, their natural erection. If even if you look at those like rat studies that I talked about with like anti lassol oxidase, which I made several videos on, in the in basically the normal rats that they just use the pump and they don't use the the lysol oxidase, the main product that they saw was an increase in length in the actual rat members, guys. I do think pumping historically is like a girth work, but I actually think that's wrong. I think that's a bad take in the, like the PE community in general. Like I definitely think you can get substantial length from pumping. Doing this beforehand is like a game changer. It's like honestly the difference between you having a hog and you having an average D. Here guys, he talks about how like if you pump but before any kind of encounter, like it can be an absolute game changer. He says it's like the difference between a hog and an average D. And to, you know, to some extent he's like, I, I absolutely agree with him, but like even when I pump guys, like the changes in my girth are like, they, they, are, they are visible, but it's not like, a, oh my God, this is like a completely different D. Like the way I do it with shorter intervals because I'm not really accumulating much edema and or like actual like swelling it's actually just focusing on expanding the chambers there was one time recently where i kind of got carried away and i think i pumped for like 10 minute straights and i'd never done that and like i got out of the tube and legitimately my girth had increased like three quarters of an inch like i couldn't even get close to like to like fitting my hand around it and i was like whoa like this is now this was like like a month ago guys it was disgusting like it reminded me like of a bullfrog neck almost just like all the way around my d and it was like soft and i remember like i was so worried because of course like that was the night my girl wanted to try to get freaky and i had like this massive hog but it was like soft and squishy and it was disgusting and i hated it honestly that was part of well, honestly why i largely stopped using a heating pad because that was with heat and i think that's what caused the significant edema the guys that video is coming i promise he's talking about like oh you could have a 6.5 inch girth and you know she's never had that but like if she grabs it it's like this bloated soft like squishy d like do you really want that is it really worth that not not to me once you stop being insecure in it you kind of realize that the difference between being like six and a half and like seven and a half it's like after a while you're just going to be smashing into cervixes and not really <laughs> it's almost like counterproductive at a point you know what i mean but with that being said, if it like makes you more secure in your head and it takes away performance anxiety, then it's worth it. This in itself, it's not going to make up for the fact that you don't have enough experience at yet, which you are going to get throughout your early years if you've taken my advice from my other videos about getting the pickup phase of your life knocked out as soon as possible. On top of that, you're gonna be way less nervous going into situations because you're gonna be very confident in your you know what when it comes down to the business. So guys, here he talks about how like, you know, if you go, the difference between 6.5 and 7.5, like it can be counterproductive, like the bigger you get. And it's kind of like that thing like, well, I don't wanna to get too big. And like, and I respect him for this because like he talks about what, number one, how it's improved his confidence. So like if you need to improve your confidence, like that is what's going to make you the most like potent lover that you can be. But I just, I don't like, I think you kind of adjust to it. Like, honestly, I'm at the point where I'm like, here I am bragging again, but I'm like over eight non bone pressed, but, and you know, my chick is very petite. She's a very petite five, three, and I can still go all the way in and like, especially depending on the time of the month, sometimes she's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> go to town. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a very high body count. Maybe I just have like a genetic anomaly, like, <laughs> you know, chick that has a very, very long like vaginal canal. But I just think, especially during this process, if you grow over time and you have a monogamous mo partner that you, they will adjust over time as well. Is essentially when you push it into yourself, you determine how much pressure you get by you push it in and then you lock it with however much pressure you want. 
and this gator determines essentially how much pressure you can create. And so guys, like here he talks about the actual design of that pump and like using that, that, that baseline pump, guys, that you're gonna be taking it and pushing it into your pelvis. And when you smash it into your pelvis, that's what's gonna expel the water. That's a terrible design, it's, it's dangerous. If you're gonna use a pump, use one with a hand pump for the love of Christ, like even if it's more expensive. I generally don't recommend that BM brand in general, but you know, full disclosure, I at least partially still use that. I mainly use an air pump now, but you know, if you're looking for an air pump, peakmalephysique.com guys, but you know, like he doesn't even talk about like the neurovascular bundle that's at the base of the penis. Like if you're jamming that thing into the base of your penis, you can cause damage that way. Or the fact that if you push it in too fast and expel too much water, you can cause a dramatic pressure change and cause damage that way. There's just a lot that, that he doesn't cover here and he talks about how he hasn't studied this in a while so I don't I don't fault him there I just I just wish he would have been a little bit more complete because quite honestly guys I do get quite a get, bit of guys that have injured themselves with with that you know hydro device people would literally like use this thing well I did it too you literally I would max out this thing and then I'd stick like this fucking wine device on top of it and then I'd like pull extra air out like here he talks about how he has his like vacuum modification that he would use to like pump out as much water as you could and then like suck out the very last bit of water. Guys, your, your your baseline like BM, like hydro model device is going to be using the max pressure you should ever use. If you're using like even more pressure, you're putting yourself at risk of damaging yourself. I know it's a rat study, you know, use, I just use the data that I have, okay? But in that rat study, they found that basically above 300 millimeters of mercury or about 12 inches of mercury, you have a much higher risk and a much lower reward ratio. So I never recommend going above that. That's part of the reason I recommend using an air pump with a gauge. Guys, here he talks about if you go ham off the jump, you're actually gonna injure yourself. Because if you go to ham off the bat, you are going to permanently damage yourself. And um, there's a lot of cases you'll find online of guys with permanently discolored or damaged D's because going too hard, too aggressively, too quickly. I don't know if you guys saw my video on like the collagen stretch, but literally like the more stretch, the more pressure you expose to your tissue over time, the more like resilient it gets and the less injury prone you're gonna be. So the most injury prone you will ever be during your entire PE career is when you first start. Take it slow, guys. And that's basically what he's talking about here. And there's real science behind that. You are most likely to injure yourself in the very beginning. And to be honest, if this is something you're insecure about at all, it's worth pursuing because it actually works. And it's a, it's a lot of time investment and that's what steered me away from it years ago. Here guys, he talks about how like, if you're insecure about it, it's something worth pursuing. And like, I absolutely agree. Like, I, I just wish there was some way I could express to you guys like how much this, this has changed my life in being able to get bigger because like it literally has changed my life and it is maybe this is just a sad reflection of how insecure i was and how messed up my dysmorphia was but like there's been a cas cascading event where like everything in my life has improved since improving my hog now that being said like at least my mentality around it i keep in shape you know i i'm with a great girl like i have a great job i kind of made a point to like maximize myself and this was the only piece missing and i thought it was always going to be missing then being able to fix that has just like changed everything guys in closing i'll like leave with this clip and he says the more assets you give yourself like the more successful you're going to be in your dating life i don't know how you guys date i haven't been in the dating scene in well over 10 years but like the last thing that gets brought up is basically D. Like if you go and try to meet somebody, they're gonna look at your like appearance, your hygiene, your breath, like how much money you appear to have, like your smile, like all of these things. Like, are you funny? Can you keep their attention? And then eventually things will be like, if you're lucky, gonna move to the bedroom and only then would they actually like see what you're working with. So I think it's kind of, I don't think it's good practice to try to like, if you're not, if this isn't like an overwhelming insecurity for you to not try to maximize those other features of your life first before you like try to maximize your D guys. So guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. There's a lot more that I could talk about, but this video is already long enough as it is. I can't thank Derek enough. And like, if by chance you're ever seeing this video, I thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for making that video that literally changed my life. And you know, along with that guys, I can't thank you enough for the love and the support and for watching this video. Uh, remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but always remember you are enough just as you are. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.